As temperatures plummet across parts of the US, COVID-19 cases keep hitting new records. Hi, how was your day? Good. How was Chinese class? Good. Yeah. After spending nearly 18 months learning from home, eight-year-old Charlotte loves being back in the classroom. Her mother, Alison Fiorello, hopes she can stay there. She reacted pretty negatively to online school and she was pretty firm, always saying that she hated it every single day. All right, now turn it. Like all public school students in Washington, D.C., Charlotte had to show proof of a negative rapid antigen test before being allowed to return from the Christmas holidays. Her parents fill in a form each morning asking about potential symptoms, and Charlotte wears a mask for most of the day. They're trying the best that they can, um, but it's just not a normal childhood experience. In other parts of the country, some schools have switched back to online learning because of staff shortages, as teachers catch COVID or have to isolate. Tell me about what you learned in Chapter 5. At the DC High School, where Claire Burke teaches, students are tested regularly and given assigned seating. For the most part, um, you know, students have, and, and faculty, and um, have stayed fairly healthy, even if, even if they've caught it. When teachers do fall sick, though, they've been difficult to replace, prompting new vaccine mandates. We are required to get a booster um, by February 1st, and of course we all had to be vaccinated as well before the school year started. Um, I think that's the right choice. And while case numbers appear to have peaked in states like New Jersey, doctors such as Anand Swami Nathan are still coming under intense pressure. The combination of an Omicron wave while we were still riding the Delta wave means that uh, we're seeing these absolute insane surges of patients and the hospital just can't take those kind of surges. I don't think the hospital could ever take those kind of surges. While the US health system struggled with a shortage of equipment such as ventilators at the start of the pandemic, Dr Megan Ranney says a lack of staff is now the number one issue affecting her hospital in Rhode Island. We already were short-staffed, and now, with Omicron, we're having large numbers of nurses, doctors, respiratory therapists, even housekeeping staff who are calling out each day. So it's this add-on effect that is making us more short-staffed than I've ever seen. It's left some of those still working in healthcare questioning their futures. This is a career uh, emergency medicine that I figured I would be doing until I was well into my 60s. And there are, there are doubts that creep in about whether that is truly sustainable because how, how bad the last two years have been. There is a, a severe um, exhaustion of, of empathy. And that's a really hard thing because we have to be able to empathize with our patients in order to take the best care of them. And I've still been able to muster that, but you definitely see it wearing extremely thin. Along with vaccines, one of the most important tools in managing this phase of the pandemic is at-home testing. Here in Washington, limited supplies of free rapid kits can be picked up from local libraries if you're willing to wait. But more broadly across the US, demand is outstripping supply. President Joe Biden came to office promising to overhaul America's response to the pandemic. But as the nation passes 850,000 COVID deaths and the Omicron wave continues to create new challenges, his approval ratings have slumped. Barta plays a role in pandemic. Dr Rick Bright is a former senior US health official who was ousted after publicly criticising the Trump administration's early handling of the crisis. He later served on Joe Biden's COVID advisory committee. I think in some ways we'd been through a couple of really rough waves in the United States and around the world, and we got complacent. We, we thought we'd seen it all. We thought that there's nothing more or worse this virus could do. You might not know this, 
but we discovered more than 200 outbreaks Dr. Every Bright year. now heads an organisation trying to prevent another pandemic, but he says better access to rapid testing is crucial to ending the current one. We need to move quickly today. The antiviral drugs we have today, two of them, one from Pfizer, one from Merck, um, are most effective the earlier you can start taking them. So if you have to wait three or five or seven days for a result, then those drugs aren't going to have that benefit. So rapid antigen testing is critical. Should we have done more testing earlier? Yes, but we're doing more now. The White House has promised to send out a billion free rapid tests to homes across the country, but nationwide shortages mean the pledge could take months to deliver. Alison Fiorello hopes to avoid any further interruptions to her daughter's learning, but she's worried about what might come next. I could see this going on for two more years, the way things are going, and, and that, that concerns me. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.